I am a weird person. I am a left-handed user, but I use my mouse on my right hand. However, even back in the days when I was using a full 108 key keyboard, I always used the number pad with my left hand whenever possible. Fast forward to recently, I bought myself the Keychron Q0 Plus that uh, I never actually thought why I need to buy it actually, but I do know that I wanted to get something like a macro pad, so this one came into my mind. Being someone who already is using Keychron stuff, I was considering selling off my Keychron Q3 and get the Keychron Q12 instead. The Q12 is a single keyboard with 108 keys, but the number pad section has been moved entirely to the left side. Sounds like a perfect thing for my use case, right? Well, after considering it, I decided that having a separate number pad would be even better for my use case here. I tend to use the number pad at a weird angle anyway, and I want to be able to tilt it independently from the keyboard. And the Q0 Plus also has extra keys on these sides here, which can be further customized using the VIA software. And it also has another knob and also extra 4 buttons here, which we will talk about later. So I got the Q0 Plus in bare bones version, and the unboxing experience is rather straightforward enough. We have the Q0 Plus itself with no key switches or key caps, and the stabilizers are still filled with globs of lube just like any other Keychron keyboards that we've come across. We also have the USB cable with matching colors and also a USB Type-C to Type-A converter too. We also have an extra set of rubber feet and gaskets. Yes, this number pad does have gaskets. And we also have some extra tools here to open up the Keychron Q0 Plus if we want to. Pretty standard stuff in terms of Keychron's usual unboxing experience. Since I have some extra KO Deep Sea switches lying around, I just slapped them onto the Q0 Plus. And I also bought the Keychron OSA keycaps separately a while back because the Q3 that I got is also in bare bones version. But uh, as you can see here, those keycaps does not fill it completely because it does not come with the M1 to M5 keycaps. That's an issue that I have and that is why all those 5 keys here are from a different keycap set. In my case here is the Blue Samurai. I also placed in two layers of neoprene inside the Keychron Q0 Plus so it doesn't sound that hollow, which actually worked really well. Okay, so we have a total of 26 keys on this Keychron Q0 Plus and with a knob that can also be pressed as well. Since it is fully compatible with VIA software, I instantly got customizing all of the keys. So let's enter my editing station here, which is right behind me, and let me show you how I use this macro pad to help me edit videos faster. Okay, so I have prepared something special for you guys. The camera here is going to point at the Keychron Q0 Plus, whereby I am OBS recording my screen here. Uh, sorry for this crop view because I am using an ultra wide screen and Macs, yeah, they resizing in Mac is not really that friendly, I would say. So you can also see what keystrokes I'm doing right now. So yeah, it, it works. So this is something that we are working with. And this video here, we just recorded it today on the 22nd of August 2023. So this video is about Caseology on NL Tech. You can check it out at the top right corner there. Do subscribe as well because we talk about different stuff in that channel, but it is run by the same people. How I map this entire Q0 Plus is actually quite funky. So as you can see, Q here is repo trim to the left, and then W is repo trim to the right. E here is something that I added myself. So when you press E, it adds the edit to all tracks. So literally just add a cut to every single track instead of clicking on each and every track. Then R means delete, I just put it there because of convenience sake. And then we got uh, what's important here. This one's a macro, this one's a macro. All these five buttons are macros actually. I'll show you a brief screenshot of the VIA app that I have set up here. And let's just show you how I can actually edit my videos. Uh, I'm just going to show you what those shortcuts actually does. So if I press 
this button which is W, the triangle button, then it will just move everything there. But uh, if I move somewhere within the track, so let's say if I press the square here, it adds a cut to every single track on the timeline and then if I press this button, it will just directly skip to that part. This is very handy to have and it's uh, something that I discovered by accident. Then num clear is undo, redo and then my 789 is to add markers. So 7 is the green marker, 8 is for actually I always use that uh, blue marker, the cyan color to type text. For example, chapters and whatnot, I will use it in blue marker. And the reason why I set it to this macro to double press blue marker is for typing the name of this marker. Let's for example say test 1 and then we just save it. And same goes to the red marker as well, which is key to number 9. So it will press the red marker twice and then this dialog appears. Red marker, I use it to type in, you know, uh, any links that I need to add, for example, uh, link to some other reviews or something like that. You know, YouTube, you can add link cards to the top right corner, which is what I have told you earlier. You can check it out at the top right corner here. That is what I do. I use red markers to mark in timeline. So 456 is the least used keys. So for me, 4 is to hold the frame. So for example, you can see it moves when I scrub the timeline. So when I press number 4, whatever is showing on the screen here will be held. And yeah, it just holds the frame for as long as the timeline goes, which for this case is the entire video. So we don't want that. When I press undo, it will jump back to this. And then for 5 is to fade in and fade out. So let's just say for this track here, if I press 5, it will add the cross dissolve for me. So that's handy for me actually. And then 6 is to crossfade for the audio. So as you can see, this green track here is my audio. If I press this, then it will say constant gain, which is to say it's kind of like a slow rise. So there we go. 1, 2, 3 here. This is a bit funny. So number 1 is a copy. Standard copy. Command C or Control C for this case. And my second one, the number 2 here, is actually to paste all of the attributes in Premiere Pro. So as you can see here, Premiere Pro you do have quite a lot of attributes. So let me show you a demo here. For me, I just press 1 here, copy all of the attributes on this timeline that has been calibrated. And then I can select the video that doesn't have any attributes, press 2, it will automatically paste for me. Yes, that is also a macro. Then number 3 is technically a duplicate of the command key. So I can do, no, this is duplicate of the option key ah uh, yeah so i can duplicate videos whenever i want so I just hold that button drag across and that happens and then zero is the razor tool which is just to cut sometimes i do prefer cutting it one by one instead of just pressing the square key to cut everything across all tracks so z this dot here is to go back to the cursor which is this tool here as you can see the selection tool yeah which is v so 0 is to go to C, Razor Tool. Then this key here is to go back to the Selection Tool. So I can toggle between the two real quickly here. And then plus minus is, uh, well, they're simple. So plus is to go down arrow key. So this is actually to skip to whatever cut that I have in the video. So for example, if I add more cuts here, then I can press the plus button to go here, here, here. Then I press the minus button to go up, 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 up. Then enter key is self-explanatory spacebar just to play so that I can edit using this number pad alone, which is real handy by the way. And then all of the macro keys, M1 to M5 here are absolutely all macros. So this key here is to, it's technically press Q then press W. So sometimes when I, Let's just say if I do a cut like this, there's a huge gap inside the timeline. I can just hit this, then it will help me combine everything side by side, which is real handy for me. And then this key here is to nest all of the footages together. So for example, if I got these two videos here, I just want to nest them into one, press this, then nest it for me. And this 
key here, M3, is actually going in tandem with this M2 button. So I don't know how I should explain this. So when you go into uh, this clip speed and duration here, you can customize by using time. So sometimes when I don't know how long that I want, but I know that I want it to end at that certain point in time. For example, from let's just say in the timeline from this point all the way up to this point, for example, I know that uh, if I hit all cut, it is taking 25 milliseconds. So I can copy this time here, undo, then fast forward the whole thing into 25 seconds and then it will automatically calculate for me that this footage here will be sped up by 148%. If I hit OK, it will fast forward everything up to that point precisely. So this key here is technically a macro to do all of that for me. So let's just say I want to fast forward everything and make it end here precisely. Hit this button, it will do everything for me in just one press of a button. So call that laziness, but I find that to be real convenient. Then M4 is just for me to decrease the volume by 3 dB. So you can see this volume here. Let me zoom it in for you guys to see. Um, so if I hit once, it will minus 3 dB. My press again, another 3 dB gone. So I can just press this until I can reach the volume that I want. So that's real convenient as well. I think I undo too much. Then for this key here, M5, it's real simple, save. So what I do is that sometimes when I'm you know, editing, my hand, my ring finger here, not ring finger, my pinky finger's base here is always somewhere around this part so I can quickly hammer it to save, which is, I find it to be real convenient, so I just leave it as command S. Uh, unfortunately, if I am planning to migrate back to Windows, then this macro pad will not really work, so I have to reprogram it if I am using Windows. Oh yeah, this knob is also customized by the way. You can use VIA to customize it. So um, I currently have it to zoom in and out the timeline. So this is zooming out, this is zooming in, and then pressing down is actually escape key. The reason why is because sometimes I just simply add a marker and then I don't want to do this. Then I can just press escape. Then it will help me close it, which is something that it's convenient, I would say. And since my Keychron Q3, which I am not using right now because we are reviewing yet another keyboard, uh, the knob is using the standard volume keys. So I have two knobs, which is good. I do have to say that the layout of this number pad is actually quite good and unique at the same time. There are four extra buttons here at the top and five on the left, and whereby this extra space here is where the knob is located. For me, I always place my hand like this, so the base of my palm here will always be on the save button and then my pinky finger will somewhere be around the knob and then all of my other fingers will be on these four buttons. My thumb will always be on the enter key which is my play and pause button. Even if the Keychron Q0 Plus helped me edit videos faster by placing all of the keys close together, I still have some issues with this macro pad. I have two issues actually. Firstly, I want to put macros on my knob, which we can't at this point, but uh, I don't really know why. Maybe this will be fixed in a future software update or something like that. And secondly, I really do wish that the Keychron Q0 Plus comes with a physical toggle switch so that we can toggle between layers easily without holding a FN key. I'm talking about a physical switch like the Q3's toggle behind there so that we can toggle between Mac and Windows layer. Having something like this on the Q0 Plus would have been so much better since I can switch between this alien layout that I got here to a standard number pad when I actually do want to type in some numbers. With all of those said, do I regret buying the Keychron Q0 Plus? Uh, well, kind of. I bought this to fix a first world problem and it works really well and it did speed up my video editing process. But as mentioned earlier, those two problems are the reason why I might find another macro pad. Actually, there is one more problem with the Q0 Plus and that is when I place the Q0 Plus right beside my Q3, it is very obvious that both of these keyboards are not with the same hue of blue and that kind of actually bothers me a lot. 
Now then, since I am enticed by the idea of getting a micro pad, will I look for another micro pad? Well, yes, and I actually already have something in mind, and that is the Doyo KB30-01 micro keyboard. However, this micro pad does not come with any keycaps, but uh, I do like the idea of having the entire navigational cluster and the arrow keys placed on the left side. And that's all we have to share with you in this video. Do let us know if you are interested to get a micro pad for yourself and for what reason and which one do you have in mind. Leave us your thoughts down in the comment section below and we will see you in the next keyboard video. Goodbye.